Check out this replay. At exactly 5 minutes, Fnatic's bot lane pushes the wave into tower and recalls. Then seconds later, the camera pans over to mid to see Madline's mid laner Niski take his own recall before quickly TPing back, followed by his lane opponent Humanoid, who does the same thing. Look at the minimap, even the top laners are doing it. Now we skip forward 30 seconds to 5.30 and we see Fnatic has 4 people mid lane, but this isn't a one off occurrence. You'll see this time and time again when you watch pro matches. Korean teams are doing it. Even Zayka bases and TPs back at 5.30. And seconds later, so does Faker. Even in this replay, MikiX just walks mid and starts punching minions at 5 minutes to give Caps a recall. All of this just so Caps is fresh off base and ready to go at 5.30? But why? Well, that's exactly what we'll find out in today's video when I answer the question, why do pro players always recall before 5 minutes 30? And we'll see exactly how you can use this to win in your solo queue games, no matter the rank. My name's Rogue and I played League of Legends professionally for 7 years. Now I'm a full time content creator and coach for all ranks iron through to challenger. So if you want more information of what a coaching session with me will look like, you can find more information by following the link in the video description below. And while you're down there, you'll also find the link to Ghost of Academy where I'll be running classes every 2 weeks and with my discount code Rogue, you'll even find the first month free so you can easily drop in and check it out. So to start, there's a few factors that go into why 5 minutes 30 is such an important timer, so let's go through all of them now before we look at some examples. Just after 5 minutes in game, a minion wave will spawn in base, but not just any wave, a wave with a cannon minion. This cannon wave arrives in each lane at 5 minutes 30, the timer we spoke about. This cannon wave is important for a few reasons. To start with, this is the minion wave that solo laners will hit level 6 on most of the time. Even if they miss an entire wave of XP in early levels, because there's a cannon minion that rewards so much, they will still hit level 6 on this wave. Next is tower vulnerability. For 5 minutes, Mid and top towers take half damage, and this cannon wave at 530 marks the first opportunity to get some real tower damage in these lanes. Now if you recall before this timer, just like the pros are doing, and so you have full HP and mana and an inventory full of items, you can get some real tower damage and some real plays off here. So in order to demonstrate the extent of payoff that you can get by playing around this 5 minute 30 timer, what I did is I went into practice tool, I picked myself a Philios, I gave myself some basic items akin to about what you would have if you took a base at 5 minutes and came back to lane, and I got to work. So that 5.30 wave arrives with the counter minion, and I kill the creep that gives me 6 just as I mentioned before. And at the moment the wave crashed into the tower, it's not a massive stacked wave, I think there's about 9 minions here, which is just a tad more than the 7 minions you get from a normal cannon wave. But you see the extent of the damage I can get. Combination between a good champion, good items, and a cannon minion means I get a ton of tower plates. One thing to mention as well is cannon minions take half damage from tower. So by the time the cannon minion dies after taking about 10 tower shots, the second wave is already here. And so now I have a huge wave to take the tower with. You can imagine. Maybe this play is just a tower dive, and then while your opponent is dead, you have the cannon minion, you have a full 45 seconds alone with the tower, and in that time, I managed to get 4 tower plates. So you can imagine the kind of payoff this has in a real game. In this way, 5 minutes 30 marks the beginning of a new stage of the game. Before this timer, it's hard to make big plays work. Without your ultimate, without starting items, it's not going to really be possible to go for plays like tower dives. But once you have level 6 and you have more stats to show for it, we can and the reward we're going to get for these players will be bigger. Instead of just getting a random kill and denying a wave, we're going to get a random kill, but we're also going to take half a tower while we're at it. Now combining slow pushes with this 535 timer can provide some pretty massive opportunities. So to start, Renekton takes a recall at 4 minutes. It's probably his last chance to get that recall in, in order to be ready by 535. After that recall, we can see Renekton getting back to lane at about 4.5 minutes, meaning that he got the first recall, and Darius is still stuck here with half health, half mana, and he needs a base. This gives Renekton the perfect opportunity to start a slow push while Darius is in base. So, we do exactly that. At 5 minutes, Renekton starts a slow push, stacking up this wave with the next one. And of course, the next wave to arrive is that 5.30 wave that we talked about. And so we know that Renekton is both going to have a massive wave stacked up, and is also going to hit level 6. And so at the moment that Darius gets back to lane, Renekton's only 1 minion away from level 6. Now, because Darius doesn't know about this timer, he doesn't know Renekton's about to be 6 and chooses an all-in, which is a massive mistake. Not only is Renekton a level up, but he has an ultimate advantage, which gives him a massive opportunity to fight, getting him a solo kill, and now because he has a cannon minion and a big wave, we get a tower plate, and we deny an absolutely massive minion wave. 
Now, even if the Darius doesn't die here, you can imagine with this level six to five advantage, if Darius messes up and takes a bad trade, the same thing's gonna happen, but with an even bigger wave under Darius's tower. Making the mistake of not being ready for this five minute 30 timer can also have some pretty massive consequences, not only for your lane, but for your team, especially when you're versing a roaming champion, but especially when versing someone with a global ultimate. In this lane, Shen's done a pretty good job to try and stay in lane as long as he can and keep his TP for a moment like this. At 4 minutes 20, he finally calls the quits and he bases and TPs back, which is a great time because he can potentially start a slow push that will coincide with that 5.30 wave. Now, this is when Garen makes a huge mistake. Garen crashes the wave into tower and gets a great opportunity to recall, but instead of doing so, he overstays. If Garen had recalled here, he'd be back in lane in time for that 5.30 wave and could potentially contest that wave and stop Shen ulting away. But since he sticks around for an extra wave, he ends up recalling now and is in base during that 5.30 wave, meaning Shen is completely uncontested when he hits level 6. So at the moment Shen hits level 6, he instantly ults mid, netting his double kill for his team, and at the moment that he's there and his team's dying, what's Garen doing? Garen's not doing anything. Garen wasn't ready. Taking us back to that clip at the start of the video, where Mickey X walks mid and starts punching the wave just to give Caps a recall. Now you can imagine why. Mickey is trying to make sure that his mid laner is ready for that 5.30 wave, and if we fast forward just a moment, we see because Caps was back in lane first, he actually gets priority, and off the back of that priority, G2 gets a dragon, just because their mid laner was ready at 5.30, and the opponents wasn't. I think this final replay does a pretty good job showcasing this different stage of the game that 5.30 brings. No matter how many kills I get in the early game, the reward is never more than denying just a few minions and some trivial tower damage. But as soon as 5.30 wave comes around, I have more items, I have a cannon minion, and now without the early game buff, the tower takes full damage. And a kill that just one minute ago would have meant denying a few minions, now results in some serious progress. Almost three tower plates and a couple waves missed. That's why we see pro players taking recalls before this time every single game. And that's why we saw Fnatic earlier grouping up four people around mid at this timer. There's huge plays available, and if you get caught out with just a starting item, you're going to be in a really bad spot when four people show up to your lane and you just aren't prepared for it because you're still in an early game mindset. So in your next game, keep track of the game time. Try and get a recall in and get ready to go at that 5.30 timer. And if you find that your opponent just isn't ready for it, you might have the opportunity to make huge game altering plays. Thanks for watching until the end. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a sub. Thanks.